All right, and this is Dan Gilman. And Zach Gazarowski of MyGamer.com. And this week we are playing High Strangeness. Um, Newly I, released, it's, it's on uh, Steam, and it just came out uh, on uh, Wii U, actually, as well. So, I guess this game was supposed to come out a really long time ago. Oh, really? Uh, it, this was a Kickstarter game. Uh and uh, the projected release for it was 2010 for the PC and Xbox 360. 2010. Yeah. Did that? Uh, did it say that like in the Steam description or something? No, 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 no. That that was nowhere on the Steam description at all. Um. It was like, it, like I I was just doing like you know my normal looking around like trying to find what is this game yeah yeah, yeah trying to find information on stuff and it, like one of the things was literally just uh the kickstarter page for this game and it was just oh yeah i plan to get this game out in 2010 and it's oh, like geez. i i think his goal was like two thousand dollars or something so more power okay. to them for not asking for a ton, but... Yeah. Like, yeah, this game was supposed to have come out forever ago, I guess. Oh, jeez. It's on uh, PC and Wii U, if that means anything. Um, um, it's kind of unique, because, so you switch between like a Super Nintendo 16-bit style, which you're playing at right now at this moment, but then you switch between an older 8-bit style, and I guess um, you use both to solve puzzles, but you switch between both forms, 18-bit uh, and 16-bit. It Kind of on the fly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, I... It's fine, and I don't really dislike this game at all. Uh, did you ever see John Dies at the End? No. Okay, so... It's just this bizarre, uh, trying to think of how to talk about John Dies at the end. Um, it, it's like a paranormal in, in book about just, like, weird things that go on in this town and, like, this other plane of existence. It, a lot of the same kind of things themes and feel I get from this game. Hmm. Like, right. but it, a lot of it kind of seems like they read John Dies at the end and were just like, we should do that. And that was another, was that another Kickstarter Steam no, game? No, no, no. John Dies at the end was a book. And a movie oh. with Tom Giovanni. Oh, see, I have no idea. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot I just got this power. So did you just started playing this? This is the beginning of the game, really? Uh, I've been playing it for a little bit. Um, I wouldn't call this the beginning of the game. All right. Um, I already have some of my power-ups at uh, medium. So... Okay. Uh, or at max level, I should say. Oh, geez. So, right, so yeah. Uh, yeah, you've been playing this for a while, then. Uh, well, you like I, it so far? I mean, what you... Uh... It's it's all right. Um, so, the official dis uh, the description from the press release uh, comes out today, May 6th, on PC and Wii U. They call it a 12-bit adventure because it's because right it's between the... Because it's 16 and, yeah. Uh -huh. e exactly. Right. Um, they say it's the first of its kind, a blend uh, blend hybrid of 8 and 16-bit games, or a 12-bit adventure drawing inspiration from timeless RPGs and classic adventure games like The Legend of Zelda, Chrono Trigger, Star Tropics, etc. Uh, high strainness uh, players take on the role of Boyd, who, along with his trusty yet sarcastic feline friend, uh, travels between two worlds to solve multi-layered problems and mysteries. Both the 8 and 16-bit world offer both advantages and disadvantages in terms of gameplay, as well as Unique qualities in terms of puzzle solving, the core, the game's core ability is to switch between 8 and 16-bit worlds, 
Uh, so the player uses their generational differences to solve puzzles and explore the universe throughout the game. Pixel art perspective of the world uh, will change. Blah blah blah. You got chip tunes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not arguing with anything you're saying. Yeah, so that's what the press release says. Um, <clears throat> how much are they charging for it? This is a ten dollar game, nine ninety nine, and it was developed by Barnyard Intelligence. Which is such a weird fucking title for a. So like, how did the game open then? Like, what? So you're like, you're like, you're in a, you're in a cave right now. Like, what's kind of going on? You're in your house. And, like, these guys in cloaks, like, that you see walking around just kind of attack you. Mm hmm And, like, there's not really any explanation. Your cat just runs away. And you're like, uh, that's weird. And so you grab a flashlight and start beating the shit out of these guys in robes. And you wake up on your front yard and you're like, oh, that must have, like, I guess I got really drunk last night. What a weird dream. Literally what he says. Okay. And, uh, you know, because he woke up on his lawn. And it's like, I, all right, I guess, you know, we all have those nights. Um, so how exactly does the switching between the 8-bit and 16-bit uh, come into game. So, like, you're just doing it now, and I noticed just watching the stream here, like, there was a ghost, and it was kind of, like, uh, faded or, like, fuzzy, but then when you switch to the 8-bit style, he was then solid and allowed you to attack him. So that's, like, one example of, like, why you switch between the 8- and 16-bit planes. Uh, Is there... so you control slightly differently. Okay. Um, I don't think you can dash in the, uh, 8-bit... Okay. But in the 16-bit, you can. Um, okay, so right there, like, you were switching between the two Yeah, uh, and so you'll see, and, like... And, like, platforms were in the 8-bit, but they weren't in the 16-bit. Yeah, so I, I think the theory is that, like, I'm at... What it, the the in-game story is that I'm switching between, like, worlds. Right. Kind of like the light and dark world in Zelda-ish. Sort of. And you, you you hold up like a, a skull thing. What what like it's so that's a the, the, the trigger. Skull. Okay, and that's the the trigger that goes between the two worlds, yeah. basically. Yes. Is there any kind of like story or something behind the skull? Like, uh, or is it's, it just, it's a, a remnant like... of the Big Bang. Um. So. Like, it's a remnant of when the universe started, supposedly, so it holds all kinds of mystic powers. Alright. Yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um. It, it, yeah, this does it a lot of John Dies at the End vibes from this game. So if you had to give it a score right now from what you've played, like an 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 3 out of Probably 10? Probably an what? 8 out of 10. Um, just because it's not super expensive. It's not... Yeah. I. It's not wonderful. Uh, like, it definitely has problems. Like... That's the one thing that I will admit about this game is that. Okay, so so like, what's a good example of a, like, how could it be better? What what's like one of the uh, issues? totally. It has, like, it it, it kind of seems like a lot of like it, it said, like when it says, you know, inspired by blah 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 right. blah. Right, right. It's very clearly inspired by better things. Okay. Um. It's sort of like, uh, did you ever play Secret of Evermore? Yeah. Um, it, Secret of Evermore was, you know, inspired by a better, um, you know, like... Like Secret of Mana, yeah. Yeah, a, a better Secret of Mana, better, a better Secret of game. Yeah, exactly, yes, yes. Uh, so, 
it, that's kind of my feeling on this stuff is that like it, it it's it, it's not awful um maybe you're talk maybe I'm talking myself out of giving it the uh eight maybe it's more of a seven yeah I mean you could kind of see like it's uh if it's a Kickstarter thing it was probably just like a couple of dudes that were like hey, I really like Zelda, I really like Chrono Trigger, I really like Secret of Mana, we should maybe try to make our own game like that. Yeah, a lot of it is... I like these XX and X games. We should make a game like that. We should make our own. Um, Try it ourselves. Yeah, and it's... Like I said, like... um, So John Dies at the End is... sort of like... If you've read really good uh, conspiracy theory fiction, if that makes sense, um, like when you see, like when you see a really good conspiracy theory movie and you're like, oh, that really could happen, you know, like uh, I don't know, like I'm blanking on a title to give you at this point, yeah, um, because the only one I can think, the only ones I can think of. You've probably never seen, like conspiracy theory. The movie? Yeah. Uh, I saw it a long ass time ago with yeah. Mel Gibson. With what? With Mel Gibson? Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> um. Yeah. I. I mean, I saw it like when it like first came out on on like VHS back yeah. in the day, right? Wow. But I. I. Uh, I. Yeah. There. Uh, 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 Julia Roberts. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's the only thing that I remember out but of that movie. I um, couldn't tell you anything about the plot. Well, there's a lot in that movie. There's a lot of, um, like, at the time, people talk, like, what people would talk about for, uh, government conspiracies and shit. Yeah. Um, you know, like, oh, they were caught with Catcher in the Rye. They were caught with this. You know, it was all of this... Like, oh, it's all a government conspiracy kind of stuff. Um, which, it, like, it, you, you can kind of tell the people who did that movie did their homework. The people who did... It, it, it sort of felt like the guy who wrote John Dies at the End, like, sort of did his homework on the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, it, it sort of just feels like the guy who wrote it read John Dies at the End and was like, good enough! All right. I mean, I guess for a Kickstarter game, you know, like again, was, they're probably only asking for a couple grand, like you said. It's probably just you know, one to three guys, you know, put it together. I think it was like one to three guys, but yeah. Also, in typical Kickstarter fashion, it was five years late. <laughs> yeah, which could happen. I could it. Like uh, I don't know about. I mean, five years. Uh, that's a, a really extra. fucking long time. This, was Kickstarter even around like five years ago? This was originally Kickstarted in 2009. Damn, when did Kickstarter? I thought Kickstarter. I mean, I knew Kickstarter was like. Kickstarter newer. has existed. I think Kickstarter started in like 2006. Back. Really? I mean, I remember like thinking about doing a Kickstarter. There, at one point, there was. Uh, it wasn't uncommon to see people do Kickstarters for for random shit like, hey, I want to go to a concert. Yeah. And it was like... I mean, there's still bullshit like that that does exist, but... Well, yeah, but, like, it was a completely different site then. Yeah, Um, yeah. And so it was just, like, you would just see these random people that... And that... Those were the success... Those were your Kickstarter success stories where people who just sat there and were like... Oh well, what are you kickstarting? Um, I'm getting concert tickets, or mm-hmm. I like I'm asking for like people to give me bus fare so I can go <laughs> home this holiday to see my parents. <laughs> and it yeah, and that was like your like right. Kickstarter success stories. And then it was like what really happened was uh, video games got involved, and you ha- started having all these video game success stories all over the yeah. place. Yeah, and then you started getting uh, tech places. It, like people figured out you could raise millions of dollars on Kickstarter, and uh, that was the end of that. 
There's got to be a story. I mean, if this game was supposed to come out five years ago, I just wonder what the hell happened during those five years. I mean, something had to have happened. Um, uh, I, I was reading the thing, and the guy's like, I've never made a game. I've always wanted to make a game. Yeah, sure. This should take about a year. And it and he, kinda, he just had no he just had no idea. He was just taking a point yeah, and, and it, it. Yeah, and it kinda sounds like you know, and more power to the guy because uh it, if you actually follow Kickstarter, there's a ton of pro, like the majority of Kickstarter projects bat, that are backed fail. And um I don't know how it is now, but when Kickstarter originally started, uh it was written straight out in the contract. Backing a product does not mean deliver you like does not guarantee yeah. delivery. Yeah. Like. Yeah, well, I wonder what the fine print said. You know, is that I wonder if that's just unique to each specific. No, that's that's project? terms of that's terms and conditions of the website itself. Oh. Of just like. Yeah. Yeah, like so you can have like a really good idea, promise the world, and then just be like, uh, "I'm out. I'm going to take this two million dollars and just put it in my pocket." People have done that. That's crazy. But I mean, oh. at least you got a finished product. I mean, it might have taken a, uh, a number of years, but at least they're not screwing the the backers over. Yeah, there was a. Uh... Well, you got a lot going on here. Uh. Like, what is that weapon that you're using? Is that a what is that? It's a flashlight. Oh, that's a flashlight. I wish I was making that up. It looks like a, uh, uh, like a mini whip or something. No, it's a flat. It's the flashlight that you pick out of your drawer. <laughs> and you upgrade that uh, as time goes on. Kind of. Do you get any other? Like a slingshot, you get any like ranged weapons? Uh, uh, a CD. Can you throw CDs? Yeah. I wonder why it's called High Strangeness. Who, who knows? Like, there's been no indication of... Uh, the game's weird, I guess. Yeah. Because it's the 12-bit. Oh, this is the cat that he that like ran away or something. Well, the cat's been with you the entire time. But that was just really weird that the cat was just suddenly in a jail cell because yeah, right because like there was no there was never any indication that the cat okay. had been captured. The last that I yeah. heard of the cat, it was like going to look for me. Yeah, I thought okay, I thought maybe I just missed something. I didn't uh, see that part of the game. No, you're no. And you're playing this with the 360 controller? Yeah. I played a lot uh, with the mouse and... Or with the... Keyboard? W yeah. Which is weird because on the keyboard... Um, so I'm just wrecking this place, I guess. You can wreck a whole shelf with a cat? Cat lateral damage. Uh, How the hell do you knock over a shelf as a cat? Um, it's got a it, strong cat. Do you not own a cat? No. Cats kind of are dicks. <laughs> That's what I hear. They sort of do whatever the fuck they want. There was a lot of cats in Chrono Trigger. I wonder if that's where they got the inspiration from. Well, there's a lot of cats in anything Japanese, though. Um, that's just... I mean, like, in, in fucking Japan, there's cafes that you can go to and you sit down with cats. And you basically pay for, like, an hour to sit with cats. <laughs> oh, the Japanese. Yeah. Well... We're just jealous, is really. 
they got a lot of cool stuff over there. Yeah. Cats included. Well, cat bars. You know, I, I'd be jealous, but I own a cat, and I don't know. Uh, Justin Wonder. Bailey, I get it. Um, so if this game is on Steam, I wonder if it would play better or worse on the Wii U version. I don't know if it's off-screen TV play. I don't know if that would really make a difference. Probably wouldn't make it be a huge deal. It's kind of weird that they would choose PC and Wii U, you know? Um, it's pro- it was probably the easiest thing to... It- Maybe or the cheapest. Yeah. Which seems weird to me. It seems almost like go to Sony or something. They seem to be pretty um, uh, indie friendly. Sony has publishing windows. Um, you know what? I'm sure Nintendo was like, hey, look, another game for our system? Absolutely. Well, because we got nothing going on right now. Nintendo, uh, yeah, I think they are kind of like that, but uh, Sony has, like, your game comes out on X date. That, like you don't really negotiate. Like this yeah. is this is the launch window. Like yeah. games come out, and who knows? Maybe it is coming out. And maybe it's just coming out like next month. Um, and you know, it, fuck. Like maybe maybe Sony has like entirely harsher uh, uh, QA processing, right? Than you know Nintendo does. I mean, at this point, maybe Nintendo's just like, does it boot up? Yes? Okay, no, you're good. All right, we need another game here, because they get like one game, maybe two, on the eShop each week. And, you know, it's less like a virtual console game. God, if they could just slam out virtual console games at this point. Well, speaking of virtual console, so uh, I was playing the new Amiibo tap to kind of change topics uh, for a little yeah, bit here. Yeah, and you won't shut up about this. It, it's a free... It came out uh, last week or the week before, maybe, but uh, so it's a free eShop download. Um, it's not a big download either. It's, you know, 100 bags or something, but... And then you take any Amiibo figure, which is weird. It's really just random. You take any amiibo fi- figure and you just tap it in the amiibo tap, and tapping that specific amiibo will unlock uh, some type of virtual console game from Nintendo or Super Nintendo. So, for example, you know, I I tapped uh, my Donkey Kong and I got like uh, F Zero on Super Nintendo. You know, I tapped my you tapped Donkey Kong and got F Zero. Right. Exactly. Like, there's no like. It doesn't. It's not like you tap Link or Sheik, and you're gonna get the trial period of Zelda or Zelda Two. Which it's just would make you sense. get. Which would make sense. This is just completely random. There's no. And then so the cool part about it, which uh, I I actually got a big kick out of, because I'm also playing through um, uh, NES Remix Two, and what's cool about this Amiibo tap game is, is you. So you tap an Amiibo, and let's say you're you're gonna unlock. Uh, Zelda 1, right, on, on original Nintendo, from tapping whatever Amiibo, your Toad Amiibo, who knows. Uh, and so when you tap it the first time, you can play, I think it's like a two or three minute trial period, uh, and you can start from the beginning of the game. But if you tap the Amiibo again, then you go to like checkpoint two, basically, and checkpoint two is level one's, or dungeon one's uh, boss battle. So you get to like fight the boss battle you can kill the boss they start you with like a a full tank of health so you can like fight them you know and then you 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 get the triforce piece and then you can kind of take it from there you tap them again you can fight the boss of level two of dungeon two you know so there's these cool like checkpoints that they have set up and basically you could play like the best portions of these games so like the original metroid is another good example where you scan it you know, you're, you you just start right at the beginning of the game. You scan it again, it immediately warps you to the Kraid fight. You scan it again, you immediately warps you to the Ridley fight, and the this the, the the warping is just instantaneous. There's no like loading or anything like that. Um, so you can basically play the best parts of these classic games without really doing any effort. Um, and there's kind of like a 
I don't know if I call it a secret, but like, for example, I was playing through F-Zero, and so you scan it once, you play, you know, track one, you, you scan it again, you play like the next track, you scan it a third time. So each game has like anywhere from like four to like ten of these checkpoints. But let's say you're playing F-Zero, all you have to do is you hit the pause button, or, or you know, the menu pu button, you go to quit, it boots you back to the main menu, and you can play any level that you want. Right. So there's kind of is like Is it still this, a time limit, though? There's still a time limit, which is that you still get, the, I think it's like 200 seconds or something like that, or, or two minutes, three, it's, I, I can't remember the exact time, but you, so you're still limited to the time limit, but you can still have access to like almost any like portion of the game, you know, which is cool and weird that Nintendo would do that. And, and, and it's all free. You just download this, this app for free, you scan it in. I mean, of course, you got to buy Amiibos and everything. And there's a ton of games to unlock. So I have, uh, I think, 16 Amiibos total, and I scanned all of them in. And I still had, oh, I don't know, like at least a half dozen more games to unlock. Now, the thing is, is you can you scan in, you know, like Donkey Kong unlocked, you know, uh, Zelda 2 or Super Metroid or whatever. Donkey Kong, my Donkey Kong Amiibo is always associated now with... Super Metroid, or with that game that it specifically unlocked. So you can't, you know, so if I want to play like the Super Metroid Trials again, I have to rescan my Donkey Kong Amiibo. Um, if you touch the, the screen, it'll tell you like the Amiibo nickname that you gave it, but if you have like me, 16, 20, all the Amiibos, it might be kind of hard to remember. Uh, was my Donkey Kong Amiibo for, you know, Balloon Fight? You know, you can't, you know, it's kind of, it might be hard to kind of remember but either way it's 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 cool i think nintendo is doing this to try to get virtual console sales maybe there's all these these younger gamers that buy these amiibos but haven't played you know wasn't around for the nintendo and super nintendo era but want to expose them to this and this is kind of a unique and fun way to do that you know just scanning the amiibos playing these checkpoints and they're all games that are already on the virtual console Yeah, I'm still not going to download it. <laughs> because you can, like... I mean, I, I think they should be doing demos anyway. Yeah, it's kind of like the... Uh, if you got the latest... If you got Smash Brothers on Wii U, it's kind of like the Masterpieces section where you can play... I think it's a three-minute trial of uh, basically virtual console games from the characters that you're playing as in Smash Brothers. It's basically like that but you're just scanning Amiibo. But each time you scan it, the, the counter resets again for another, you know, three minutes. So it's not like you just get three minutes, period. It's each time you do, each time you tap it, you get more time. So it's kind of cool, and you can essentially kind of cheat the system by, you know, going to the start screen and going back to the main menu. But it's cool. You can scan like you know. I was playing Link to the Past, and you can just play like the boss battles and stuff. Like it's, it, it's just you. You could play the best parts of the game without having to put the time or the effort in. All right. So these, that's my fun fact for this week. These drawings that pop up throughout the game are just odd. I was gonna say the art style is uh, weird. Yeah. Um, that, that's not the right word. Um, different. It's just uh, maybe because it's maybe because they got to be restrained to the to the eight or the the twelve well, bit. I mean, like this is like a weird kind of odd painting. Yeah, exactly. And even if you look at the artwork for the game, you know, like I downloaded like the art assets and stuff, and it's still like uh, it's just odd. It's just out there, kind of. It's different. Yeah. High strangeness. Like it's, high, it's, it's high strangeness. That's a good word to describe it. I wonder how long this game takes to beat. How many, like, what do you think? You're, what, two, three hours in? What? Uh, I think a little over two. Yeah, it doesn't say or anything, but... From the press release, but, uh... Yeah. So 
So there's like aliens involved. Is that but, or different? It's like different universes. The Crystal Skull. Is this Indiana Jones? Yeah, well, like... Uh, the Crystal Skulls are... Um, <laughs> like, there, there's a theory of Crystal Skulls. It's been around since the 1920s. Blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. Um, there... Like, this, this woman found... Uh, when she was a kid in the 20s, um, found a, crist a skull made out of crystal, and it was, like, too smooth to be made by hand. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, and it was, like, it vibrated in weird ways and could pick up, like, radio signals randomly, and it would just start speaking out of its mouth with, like, the radio signals. It was, like, really odd shit, and, like, people, like, it was, like, people couldn't figure out how it was made, and they couldn't see grooves from, like, etching for years and years, and finally, um, what, what happened is, uh, like, they took it to an electron microscope, and they're like, yeah, no, this is totally, like, just diamond tip, uh, bits that were used to make this, it's... Oh, so it was just like uh, no one researched was... this that hard. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was like it was really fucking like it's when you read everything around except what it actually is. It's really interesting until you get to the point of yeah, it was complete bullshit. This it's is kind some... of a long cutscene. Oh, here. they're all really fucking long like this. Which is I wasn't expecting that from and they and they like and it's all like shut up um one of them it was like talking about how like the universe was created during the big bang and stuff and like creating like the earth and plants and animals and it literally kept going on describing things that were created <laughs> and it was like atoms and plant and molecules and this and this and i'm like if it comes up with another line i'm just gonna start laughing hysterically and then it did another line and then another line and then another line and i'm like uh. what the fuck i got the point yeah i uh i wasn't anticipating like this much story yeah with an 8 slash 16 bit 12 bit yeah and it's it's not all fin it's it's very high handed and undeservingly so So the Misadventures of Tron Bond is on PSN for six bucks right now. Yeah, that kind of annoys me because I have the physical copy of it. That thing's worth like 120 bucks. I think it might even be a little bit more than that. Oh, that was like the la that last time I checked was like two years ago. Oh yeah, maybe it's. I'm sure it's only gotten rarer since then. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, when they release digital copies of that shit, it like drives the price down. But I know I'm. Yeah, I mean, it's still a rare I'm, game. I'm still that... happy that they're doing it. Yeah. Like, I'm pissed because I went out of my way to buy a copy of, like, Metroid Prime Trilogy, and then a couple months later, oh, it's on Virtual Console right now for yeah, 10 for... bucks. It's yeah. like, son of a bitch. I mean, it's still a rare game because, it, you know, that, that 
they only made so many copies of it it's still rare but the overall demand for it diminishes when you can't have access to play it as easily you know i i honestly i would rather people have access to play games whenever and just have the physical stuff be rare because what it is is people will always have that demand and you know i it, Microsoft is really going well. Microsoft and Sony, for the most part, are really going to be the like keepers of the like kingdom on this to see how long they're going to honor like how long you keep your digital rights. Right, or like because maybe you can only play it on your PlayStation Three, your PSP, and your Vita. But oh, you got to pay an extra two bucks if you want to play it on your PS4. You got to pay an extra two bucks if you want to play it eventually on your PS5. Well, I mean, like you know, 360 gate, 360 digital downloads don't transfer to the one. PS3 digital downloads don't transfer, or yeah, 360 don't go. You know, like none of this stuff goes forward. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And like, and even if like if you like the only kind of exception is Wii to Wii U, but if you want to re-download it on Wii U, you have to, because there's like all the stupid uh, Miiverse shit that no one cares about, you have to pay an extra like a dollar or two bucks it's to like re-download it. It's two bucks for the upgrade. I think it's, yeah, I think it's too right. But yeah, that's going to be an interest. I mean, when the when the PS5 comes out, because I mean, you know what I think is gonna, just going to happen is Sony, and they're already doing it now with like the PlayStation Now and the streaming and all that kind of stuff. Like, instead of just buying each game individually, they're just going to be like Netflix, where you just have to pay us 20 bucks a month, but you're going to have access to everything, you know? Um, they might do wait. something like that. Let's wait and fucking see. Right. I could see them doing something like that. So instead of just buying one or two games every other month, it's just a constant 20 bucks, 40 bucks, who knows? They do have something like that. It's called PSN. <laughs> and they got the streaming service now, which is PlayStation Now, I think. I haven't done Yeah, but you have to pay for those games individually. Yes. We... I, I've actually... Uh, what was it? We, we did an interview at one point. Uh... Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Well, wait, what was that? I missed it. The sequence of numbers. What was the sequence of numbers? It was the numbers from Lost. Oh. So, you got your red bar is your health bar. What's that green bar that's like slowly going down and then it refills? It is uh, my mana? It's basically my stamina. Oh, so that allows you to, like, dash or something? Um, attack. So I can't just keep, like... Oh, alright, okay. Okay. You, but you can travel back and forth between the 8-bit and 16-bit whenever you want. There's no limit on that? None at all. Uh, no, well, it takes some mana, but by the time that, like, I've actually traveled there, it's, it's like, so, like, light on the mana usage that by the time I've already, like, transitioned, it's pretty much refilled. So you got A to attack, B is like your other ability, and then what, like the Y button goes back between the 8 and 16 bit? Uh, uh, no, 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 it's uh, the shoulder buttons do that. Oh, alright. But really it's only the two, mostly a two button game. Is... Uh, the X button dashes, uh, X is, oh, X okay. is your do stuff button, Y is open menu. Um, okay, you don't have to, you don't like, you know, tap tap to dash. No, it's a it's a Super Nintendo controller, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So if you look at it that way, it makes more sense. Right. Because I was going to say, I mean, if this is, you know, if you want to be a dick about it, if it's going to be an eight-bit game, there is only two buttons on eight-bit consoles. Uh. Well, you can't dash in. Uh. Uh oh. So it's only the two buttons. I stand corrected. Good call. What, what was that, like, heat trail? Uh, I, I, I don't lava. know. I don't know. It kind of just started happening, and I was like, hey. Um. Whoa, what? Can you... Oh, yeah, you can get hurt by that. Does your health automatically refill, or do you got to no, pick up health No, it's uh, the eyes that drop. 
it's currency, uh, like, you use it, you use that stuff to, like, upgrade, but when you get it, it refills your mana and health. Uh. So these terminal things are all over the place. Oh. You gotta get that code from the beach? Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe what that's what it is, is that when I'm running over oh yeah. Maybe because it's just hot and you're in the desert, it's Oh, okay, quick, I can actually sandish. see what would what is Oh in the eight oh in I got gotcha. I can see what's going yeah. change. Yeah, I see they're using that mechanic. I was yeah, they're actually see how pretty they're... good about uh, making you use all of the mechanics they've introduced. Yeah, you know, switching between. I was going to say how, you know, what else are they doing besides, you know, no dashing and... Okay, well that's a little creative then. Yeah, you end up, once, once they make, once they introduce that you can switch between the two, you're you're fucking switching between the two pretty constantly. Mm -hmm. And that happens probably right in the beginning of the game, no? Uh, recently, actually. Um, oh. So what? You start off in eight bit? Uh, start off in sixteen. Please tell me he automatically like saves those numbers and you don't he have to does. like write them down. Oh, this, so this is your upgrade screen right here. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, if you wanted to, like, that seems to be... It, it gives you access to, like, upgrade everything from the very beginning. So if you wanted to, you could... I could have, like, accessed everything and upgraded everything from the word go mm -hmm. so so yeah can, can you just like grind basically i could have ground just... and, and made him max level in the first area yeah oh, okay there we go and the thing is the, the thing that kind of sucks is like enemies all always only drop one eye so it like doesn't it doesn't really make a difference if I had ground in the first area, mm -hmm. because those enemies are easier. So it would have. Yeah, because I mean you haven't really died yet, you know, in terms of like you know, where's the difficulty yet? Because if everybody just drops the one piece of, yeah, you know, I. Well, and like one of the first things that I upgraded was uh, my armor that you take less damage. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like armor and uh, attacks use less mana. So, like, oh. when I do stuff, yeah. it, like, I can do more things as and, like, mm -hmm. without running out. What are, is this, like, Cthulhu? Like, what the Yeah, hell? I think they're supposed to be, like, a Cthulhu. The Creeping Terror. And would it be an island setting without Moy heads? Yeah, I like they, when they said they were, we were going to Easter Island. I was kind of like, ah, fuck. Yeah, that's the stereotypical. Oh, something weird's happening. Got to go to Easter Island. The environments seem, um, I'm gonna say, big, but not. Uh, not like a big environment, just like each screen is just like an open, empty space. You know, it's just like a lot of like empty space. Like here you got a couple of trees. I don't know, it seems like they can like... It, it, it could have been it seems, more intricate. Yeah, well there's, it seems like, you know, you kill a guy, you walk about a screen's length of emptiness. No, I mean, there's there's just there's gra nothing. You know, grass, or, grass or beach in this case, and then there's nothing. And then, you know, here's another guy. Did not like that. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, do you, did you were you kind of drowned or something? But it just kicked you back, huh? Yeah. I, I just wanted to see what the fuck would happen. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did. I was because I was gonna ask you, hey, switch back real quick. Yeah, and it only takes like to upgrade something to the max level. It only takes fifty eyeballs. And you can kind of grind those, even though they drop, like, one at a time, every enemy drops one, so you can grind them out pretty fucking quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can grow each stat, what, four levels, was it? Did I see that right? Uh, you can grow them twice. It's uh, 25 and then um, uh, 50 are those. Oh, okay. So yeah, you might be able to max out pretty quick then. So if that's the case, it might be a shorter game. I don't know where you have to go now. Yeah, that game does that does this a lot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if you get lost, is there any kind of like hint system or something? Oh, uh, like, really general out? hint system. But for the most part, it's like you can really kind of only go from point A to point B. It's not like it's not like a big ass open world. No, it's it's all kind of like funneling you through a tunnel. Yeah, it's not stage based, but you're still. It's not like here's level one, get you know, get to level two, but it's just strung together. Yeah. And back to a cave. See, see how this cave is just so, so much open space. It's just like a big empty sp like it, it doesn't need to be like 10 tiles tall. I no, I, I totally get what you're saying. Like there is absolutely no reason that the cave is at, like the way it is. Mhm. Mm Could be tightened up a little bit. You tighten up those graphics on level 12. Did you get the Mario Kart DLC Pack 2? Of course I did. I, I bought it. Oh yeah, we streamed it a while ago. Yeah, you bought the bundle thing. Yeah, I did yeah. the same thing. I like the DLC. I posted a review of it today. Yeah. I think it's good stuff. Yeah, I, I also believe it is good stuff. Um, I streamed it over the weekend, like right after it came out. Oh, nice. Um, I, I have absolutely no complaints about it. Um, yeah, and I, I mentioned this in my review. It's kind of weird that Nintendo, one, comes out with DLC. Two, let alone it's like DLC that's like really good that you're going to want to buy. Yeah. It, like the timing is weird, though. It's really weird. And because Mario Kart came out, I think it was last May. I think it was one year it, ago. Yeah, it was almost a year ago. Like, almost to the day, you know. Yeah, so you got Pack 1, which came out, like, a few months after with the Zelda pack. I mean, it was still six months later. We got Pack 1, and now we got Pack 2 here a year later. But, yeah, yeah the timing is really weird, but either way, I'm glad they did it. I mean, it's... And then they co-released it with the 200cc free update, which is cool. New way to play. What the hell is this? <laughs> There's a T-Rex. That just looks weird. Yeah, and, and like the worst part is that it's like every he boss didn't even in the like game attack you. Every every well no, every boss in the game has basically been dealt with the same way. Throw a CD at its fucking face. And then hit it with your flashlight until, like, you run it's out of mana. Just button mash, yeah. Uh, walk away until, like, your mana's restored. And then, like... <sighs> the good old hit and run tactics. Yeah.
Is this like a wake up Karano? I have no idea. Watch everyone slowly walk out of the room. Yeah, I can. Because the room is so fucking big. Look at how, look at the distance between the beds. Yeah, Cut I know, it out. right. I, maybe they had to just build it that way from a technical standpoint. Because when you switch over to the eight bit, it like has to be like uh, more space. Can you can you change the eight bit right now during a cutscene like this? No. No. Uh, Oh, good to watch the cat fucking walk out. Nope, it's they're still fucking See, like, forever yeah. apart. Uh, there's. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so this has been Dan Gilman. You can follow me on Twitter. I am at Gilman. Uh, you can follow me on my personal website, varms.net, and you can also always see what I'm up to on mygamer.com, a website that I actually update things on. Um, yeah. Yep. And I am Zach. Zach. Well, go, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Nope, I didn't go ahead. Nope. Uh, I, I am I'm Zach Ezrowski. Uh, we write for mygamer.com. Of course, check that out. My personal site is squallsnake.com. You can follow me on the Twitter at Zach Gaz, Z A C K G A Z. Squall Snake on Xbox Live. You can be my friend if you want. Ask me for my Nintendo Wii friend code. Sure, I gotta look it up. But um, so yeah, that's high strange, high strangeness. It's on PC. It's ten bucks. It's also on Wii U. Just came out. Twelve bit adventure. It's got some problems, but for ten bucks, you might wanna take a peek at it. Yeah. All right, and we will see you guys next week for something interesting, hopefully. Game on.